Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to continue building the reboot character, Mike, today. There's a little bit more of tweaking that I have to do on his head. And then today we're going to build his uh, shoulder and his joints and his arms and his hand. And it's pretty easy, but there's some little subtle changes, especially in his forearm, that um, I want to point out <clears throat> and use, an, or, or, again, an organic way of building his mitten hands that are pretty interesting. So we'll see how far we get and if we can continue and build the bottom part, that will be fine. And then next week we'll build, you know, his basic body and legs and his mouth and then we'll go and we'll surface it and we'll be done. But again, um, the purpose of um, doing this together is to show you in Lightwave how you can work with primitives, but using some more sophisticated ways of um, modeling, um, especially in the modification aspects of it, you can get some pretty interesting results, um, much more sophisticated. And that kind of, you know, uh, leads in later on when you're doing organic modeling of working basically with primitives, but using uh, various tools like the um, uh, smooth shift to add geometry, or more importantly, um, if we go under multiply and you hit B for bevel, the bevel tool is your friend. That's one of the ways that you add a lot of geometry. Um, but in smooth shift is very similar, but when we build the mitten hand today, I'll point out the difference between the two. So you can see, it's like um, stretch and size. They do similar things, but slightly different. So I'm gonna go back to um, modify because I want to edit. So let's um, continue where we left off here. So there's a little bit more. I tweaked this a little bit to refine the proportions but I need to make the sides bulge just a little bit. So the best way of doing that is to select points, okay, to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I have point mode selected in the lower left-hand corner. And I'm gonna select this point here, right here, if I can select it. There we go. See, it's kind of hard to see here, the little orange dot. And I'm going to select this one here. Okay. So now what I can do is I can stretch it forward. So, but rather than stretch, I'm just going to use T for move. And if you forget that, it's under modify move here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that forward just a little bit. Okay. So see how that bulges that just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, just a little bit, not much. The sides are not as um, bulge as the top and the bottom. So that works out pretty well. And then the other thing that I can do is that I can take the inner points here and I can pull them in just a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off key for move because I'm done moving. I'm going to deselect in the lower left hand corner. I'm going to select this point, and I'm using the, um, it, it's, um, I should stop for a moment to let you know why I'm, oh, how, uh, let me stop for a second to answer a question here. Yes, the, the bottom left-hand corner is, that's an image of Mike, and where you get that image is, um, the other day I did, uh, in the last video, I did an, an image search on Google, uh, using uh, Google. So you can do that and you'll find it. And it's about 800 by 600 pixels um, when you select the images and you download the image and um, look at the last video and you'll see how I inserted it into the background. And if we have time today, I'll do that again, okay? So let me go ahead and answer that, answer that. Done, done. Okay. So let me go back and um, there's a reason why I'm using the 
the textured mode to select pixels. And either way, wireframe or textual, textured will work, but it depends on what you're doing. So for example, if I wanted to select a whole row of points, what I might do is in wireframe, if I click here, okay, if they're lined up, you'll notice that this one and this one are lined up. So I'm, I've got those selected all the way across. So that's the plus and the minus of selecting in wireframe. Then if there are points behind it that are um, aligned with it, they will be selected. But in textured um, view, they won't. So um, I only want to select this point and this one. Okay, so now I'm going to use stretch, that's H, and then you'll find that right down here. And from the top view, I'm going to pull it together just a little bit. Just, to, you know, bring it in just a tad like so, and then maybe hit T for move, and then from the side view, pull it out just a little bit. So you can see that it's a little bit, has a little bit, you know, blob to it, maybe a little bit more than what they've done but to exaggerate it, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that, those proportions. Okay, so if I'm done moving it, hit T again, remember to turn it off and then deselect the points. Now, if you recall, this is the organic way of building the head. Um, if I switch to the other layer that I have here, um, if you recall, this is if you watch the, the video from Monday, this is, um, Oh, how can you make it in Blender? Um, I can try to help you with that. It's the, by using the bevel tool. Um, so I'll try to help you with that a little bit later. Okay. Um, I would strongly recommend getting, at least for the time being, using the, um, the free version or the one that you have available to you and um, Lightwave, and then you can save it as an OBJ file, and then you can import it into Blender if you want later on. That's what I would try for right now. Okay. Again, um, Blender is not my go-to program. I can help a little bit with it, but not a lot at the moment. And I'm watching my own videos, you know, trying to get up to speed with Blender. You know, because it is a popular program, it is for free, it is robust, and that sort of thing. And eventually we will be switching to it more permanently. But right now I'm in transition, so it's kind of hard on both of us. Okie doke. So let me go back here to this. So what I want to do now is I want to start building arms. And to do that, um, what I need to do is I need to, instead of working on the head layer, I'm going to work on a brand new layer up here. And then put the head in the background by clicking on the bottom half there. Okay. Now, in talking about Blender, it's all done. You know, you can turn objects on and off. Your layers are, work very differently. And they've actually, they've eliminated layers. So, um, but you can turn objects on and off and put them, you know, select them, deselect them. And it works differently here in Lightwave. That if it's in the foreground layer, it affects everything. So now what I want to do is I want to build his shoulder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to create and his shoulder is very much, it's just a cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the disk tool and make sure that I have my numeric requester vis visible. And I want to, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off, deselect, and I'm going to cut it because I want to start it over again. So let's do that again. I'm going to use a disk tool and I would rather start building it by hand to get the basic proportions. So from the side view, I'm going to click and drag to pull this out like so. So I want the 
the Y and the Z to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and they can either be 50 or 55, whatever. Um, let's go ahead and make it 50. And make sure that it's centered over here. You can see from the top view and the perspective view that I have, you know, in, when it's in wireframe, and it just, I have a little, you know, disk here that I can click and drag and drag over. Like so. So that it overlaps just a little bit. Okie doke. And maybe it's a little bit too thick, so I'll pull this back just a little bit, like so. But you'll see that the top edge of this is beveled a little bit. So in order to bevel it, um, we need to use the bevel tool. That's the tool of choice. So before I use it, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the disk tool. And I'm going to click here. Make sure, see I have points selected, so I have to remember to select polygons. So there we go, select poly, so that polygon is selected. So if I were to shrink this now, watch what happens. If I select, for example, um, instead of stretch, if I select size, okay, so that everything is uniform and it's and when I change the size of it and make it from the center, not from the mouse, but from the center of the selection. And I click and I drag. See how it stretches it from here? Well, I want this side to remain perfectly, um, you know, rigid before I bevel it. So I'm going to undo that. And instead of using size, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the bevel tool. So B for bevel, and all I have to do in any of the, the four quadrants is just to click once and that's it. And I've added geometry. So how do I know that? Is that if I go ahead and I shrink it, now if I use size, watch what happens. See how it brings it in like that? And I have this extra geometry that's added around here. And now what I can do is I can just hit T for move and I can pull that out just a little bit. And there's my bevel, like so. So that looks pretty good. And if I need to make it a little bit bigger, I can go ahead and select size again, and I can make it a little bit bigger. So and that works just fine. So there's our, um, you know, our shoulder. So what I need to do now is I need to turn off size. I need to deselect the polygon and because it's on its own layer, I can go ahead and I can assign um, a texture to it. Let me select that again, hit T for move. And let's just move this back just a smidge. Just to be kind of picky about the proportions here. There we go. Deselect, so T for move, select. And now I'm going to hit Q to resurface it. And again, that's done a little bit different in Blender too. You don't have to get Q, you just have to have it selected and then you can assign a, tech, a holding place for a texture for it. So I already have the one that I created before. It's the brass texture. So I'll just apply that. That's what's applied to it. Now, since I'm done with this and I don't need this layer anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it. Command X to cut. I'm gonna go back to the, the layer with the head on it. And I'm going to hit, um, actually, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to do that. And you'll see, because I want to make both arms at the same time. So I'm going to have to mirror it later. So I'm kind of thinking ahead here. So let me go ahead and paste that back in there. So I am going to go ahead and make the arm separate for the time being, and then put all of it on one layer. And then to make the, his right arm and hands, I'm going to use the mirror tool. Um, okay, um, Erica, yeah, question? Um, do it in Q&A because I'm not seeing. Um, there you go. Oh, how did I change the color? You hit Q. 
And from before, I already had these, these surfaces. Now, if you don't have any surfaces, it's at this time that you can go ahead and name a surface. And because this is going to be brass or gold, you can name it. And then you can click here for the color. Now, since I've already assigned a texture, I can't use this anymore. If I want to change it, then I have to do something different. I have to use the surface editor. And you can see that I already have brass selected as, as the texture for this. So if I wanted to change this, you know, I could assign a different texture to it. Um, but I, since I've already named the texture for this surface, I can't use Q. That's only for the initial, you know, steps in, in creating a texture in here. Okay. Does that help? Okay. There we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build his um, joint here. And that's nothing more than a sphere. So again, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the background. And if I want to put the others in the background, I can hold down the shift key and hit the bottom half again as well. So both of these layers are in the background. So Similarly, I'm going to go ahead and from the right view, I'm going to go ahead and, and create. I'm going to select a ball. And I'm going to go ahead and click and drag like so. And go ahead and stretch it out. And move it over like so. And let me zoom in a little bit. Make sure that it is centered. Come close to being centered. That looks pretty good. You can always change it, but it's best if you sort of take care of that now. Now, again, we need to make sure that it's a perfect sphere and then make sure that the radius, the X, Y, and Z are all the same. So I'm going to go ahead and use 25 for all of them. And that looks pretty good. Okay, and that's sticking out there. Let's zoom out a little bit. And that looks about the right size. It could be a little bit larger. Um, let me move it in just a little bit. There we go, just like that. Again, I'm checking each of the, the, um, the quadrants to make sure everything is aligned correctly. Now I can go ahead and I can fix it just by going ahead and turning off the ball tool. And now I, this is, um, uh, Erica, this is where I can assign initial uh, texture because, because I haven't added chrome yet. And that's what this is. This is going to be a chrome or silver-like texture. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Q. And again, because it's on its own layer, it will only affect this particular object. Now I can name it and I'll just name it Chrome because I'm going to have a Chrome texture. And then I'm just going to leave it gray. That's fine for right now. If I want to make it a um, small, uh, a lighter gray, I can do that. So a little bit lighter, why not? Click OK and click OK. I'm done. OK. Do we have to make it as the same color as the reference? Or, oh, you can make, for right now, these are just placeholders for for the textures. They can be any color you want. Um, I'm picking colors that are going to closely resemble the final, um, but they're not even close. They don't have, they can be any color, just like when I did the table and lamp. Um, they don't have to resemble that at all. Okay. So that's where we are, where we are with that. Um, because we're going to do later when we, we, we finished building our model, we're going to send it over to layout. And just as we did with the table and lamp, we're going to refine the textures. And we're going to make the brass or the gold look like gold. And we're going to make the chrome look like chrome, and on and on and on. Okay. So that was simple. We've got uh, his joint. And now we need to build a forearm. So I'm going to use, um, uh, instead of putting it into position, 
like we have in a final pose, I'm just going to use Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. So the arms are going to be stuck straight out. And then later, if you take Chris's animation class and you rig it, then you can go ahead and you can add, um, you know, bones to it and that sort of thing. So um, but I'm ready to go again. And now I can take this joint and I can go ahead and I can cut it. And I'm going to go back to the last layer here, the one that I have for the his shoulder, if you want to call it that, and I'm going to paste it in there like so. So I'm going to create a brand new layer again. Let's go to a new layer. And let's put the joint and the shoulder and the head and the background layer, just so I can see them for reference. And now I can go ahead and I can build um, his upper arm. So what I want to do is I'm going to, again, use the disk tool. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so I can see a little bit better. I'm going to click and drag like so. And I'm going to move it into position so it's about the right size, about the, about the right size placement. So let me zoom in a little bit more so I can be a little bit more precise with my placement. There we go. And now from the top view, I can go ahead and stretch it out a bit. And I need to look at the photograph just a little bit for the proximate proportions. You can see that it's pretty close. I can go ahead and make it maybe a little bit shorter. That's um, about it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and fix it. But you'll notice that um, the upper part of his forearm and the lower part near him, the joint in his, that it connects to his forearm um, is tapered. There's a couple of different ways that I can do that. So what I can do is I can just select, the easiest way is just to select the end polygon. And then I can use the, um, the size tool to do that, which is shift H. Or you can come down here and I can use size. And now when I um, just click and drag anywhere, as long as it's from the center of the selection, I can taper it like so. Okay. That's one way to do that. And that works pretty well. Another way to do that, and there is a specific tool for this. So if I deselect the object, so if I turn off size and I deselect the polygon, um, there is taper and there's taper constrain. I want taper constrain. And when I select that, you'll notice that we have a fall off. It's linear. So now from, you know, the, if I select the right view and I click and I drag, Notice that it tapers it like so, without having any polygons selected. If I undo that, and I click the taper from the opposite side, and I do that from the right view, now watch what happens. See how that side now is the side that's tapering. So there's are all of these variables that you, know, you have to get acclimated to understand how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and resize it a little bit. There we go. We'll just use this. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's fixed. So now I have my, you know, turn off taper constraint. Taper is like stretch. It can be, it'll taper it, but the, the two dimensions that you taper are varied. And when you constrain it, the, both um, whatever coordinates you're using X and Z or the Y and Z or whatever are going to be constrained and I wanted it constrained. So once again, I need to assign a surface to this. So I hit Q. I already have that surface created, which is going to be the brass surface and I click OK. Now I'm ready to add another joint and then we're going to do the forearm and the forearm is the tricky part. Okay. 
is it has lumps in it. It's kind of like Popeye's forearms, you know, that bulge a little bit. And so, we're, you know, we're gradually getting to that. And the hand isn't too difficult either, but again, it's a, it's a different way of working. So I'm going to go ahead and since I finished this, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I'm going to go back to the last layer here and I'm going to paste. So I've got that in there. And now I can create a new layer again. And I can pull down the shift key and select the bottom parts of those so that they're, they're in the background. So I'm always working on, an, on a one layer in the foreground and the rest of them in the background so I don't inadvertently um, affect them. So I'll go ahead and again, I'll select the um, under create and I select the ball tool. From the side view, I'll zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to click and drag. And I want the ball to be just a little bit bigger than like so. I'm going to pull that out like so. And again, make sure that they're all the same. I have eight. And let's see how that works. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's, from the top view, I can click and drag and move it over. And that looks pretty good. That's pretty good. Might make it a little bit bigger. Let me go ahead and make it 10, just for the heck of it. And I like that a little bit better, okay? So again, if I move that over just a tad and I zoom in, I can see the placement. And again, I'm always looking at the top right and um, back views for the, the position, position it and, you know, accurately. That's something in, um, in Blender that you don't do because you're always kind of working in, lay, in layout view and single view. You can click and you can go back and forth from X, Y, and Z coordinates and then go back to your um, perspective view, but I, 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 this is kind of old school and I kind of prefer it this way, working in quad view until I'm done with it, then I can work in, in a single view. But to let you know, at any time, if you want any of these to be in a single view, let's say I want the perspective view to be in a single view, then that's what this little button in the upper right hand corner does. That takes me into a single view. And then if I click that button again, it takes me back out into the quad view. And the same, if I wanted the top view to be a single view, I click on that button up here. And now I can just see the top view. And sometimes you do need to do that. Okay. And again, I click in the upper right hand corner, click that button to go back to the quad view. So we already have the texture for this. Um, and it is, let's go ahead and turn off the ball tool. So we're done. I hit Q. We already have the Chrome since we've already added that. I'll select Chrome. I click OK. And again, I'm going to repeat. And again, this is my way of working. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I'm going to go back to this view here and I'm going to paste. And now I'm going to go and select a new view and then hold down the shift key to select the bottom halves of these views. So I want this one to be foreground, these to be the background. Okay, so now I'm ready to build the forearm. And again, it's a cylinder, but this is a little bit different because I want to add bulges. So to be able to add bulges and deform it, I can't use the default geometry. I need more segments in here. I need, you know, I could um, do it in a variety of ways, but if you know that in advance, the time to do it is at the time that you build the, um, the that particular part. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the disk tool. And I'm going to zoom in from the right view. Move it over just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to click and drag. Like so. And that's six, six. And I'm going to pull this out. So and I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to move it in position. Like so. Okay, let's stretch it out just a little bit. Make it a little bit longer. So if I try to use, in a moment, if I try to use the tools that I want to use to 
to build this. You're going to have to trust me on this. Um, I, I will not be able to do it. So what I want to do is I want to add segments. And you'll notice, and this is where you need the numeric requester. By default, we have 24 sides, but we only have one segment. That, and that's the distance between, um, you know, in between here, between these two end caps. So I'm going to add segments, and I'm going to add a boatload of them. I'm going to go, and you can see in my, um, uh, um, views here, the additional segments that are being added. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crank it up to maybe 36. Why not? Do I need that many? Probably not, but just a, a boatload of them. And you can see that I get a very fine mesh when I do that. And that's what I want. Can you add the, that that geometry later? Yes, we can do what I did the other day for the screen and do subdivide. There's also something called a knife tool, but that will give you ge um, irregular um, geometry added. Um, it's just easier to do it at the time that you build it. And so that's what I'm doing now. So let's turn off the disk tool. And now I'm ready to deform this. Okay, so let's look at this from Zoom in here a little bit, and you can see what's going on. Now let's turn this like a little bit like so, and move it over. Okay, so what I want to use, and this is a really weird tool, but it's available, and it's hidden way deep down in here. And um, it's called, if we look under, not under transform, any of these, it's not here. It's under more, and it's called pole evenly. We, we're going to be using the pole tool and pole evenly. And what that means, I don't know. Um, it's similar to what I used the other day when I used the, um, the mag magnet tool. So again, I want to be able to control the fall off for this. Because um, if I just use it by default, and I use the end view here, and I change this, from here. See how it's affecting that side like so? And I don't want that. That's not how I want it to be deformed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the radial fall off like so. And I'm going to use this slider here so this is nice and even. And now I want to control where that goes. So I'm going to right click and drag from the top view and then right click and move it into position and right click and resize it just a little bit. And then from the right view, I'm gonna right click and pull that out a little and right click and move it into position. So that little bubble, it's like a, a, an invisible bubble that, that hovers over that area. And now, the area in the center of that radial will be most affected in the, the points towards the edge and outside will be less or not affected at all. So now when I use um, my left mouse button from the right view and I click and I drag, notice how it bulges a little bit. When I write, I, I'm dragging to the right. If I drag to the left, it shrinks. So you can make it you know, scrunch it too, but I want it to bulge just a little bit. Okay, just a little. I'm exaggerating a little bit more than what they have done in there. So if I don't like that, I can undo and I can right click and I can move it over just a little bit. And that's what I want to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and let's do that again. Make it bulge just a little bit. That looks good. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to move it over like so. And I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. So I'll right click and I'll make it a little bit smaller in here. Like so. And now I'm going to left click from the right view and move it to the right. And I'll bulge that a little bit too. So now I have these two little bulges in here. So especially when you look at the perspective view, you can see those bulges. So I'm 
you know, pretty dramatically changing. We started with a basic um, primitive, a cylinder. And before we did anything to it, I added segments to add the geometry in order to be able to use this pull evenly tool. Okay. Without adding that geometry, it's not possible to do this with any tool. You have to add uh, additional um, quads in order to do this. So that's very important. So if you forget, it's easier just to delete that particular part, make it again, and then add ge the geometry as you do that, and it will be adding segments. And as I said, I added a boat load just for the heck of it. Okay. Now, if I need to stretch this out, I can, the whole object. So I'm going to turn off pull evenly. I don't need it anymore. But if I decide, you know what, I want this to be stretched a little bit longer, and I want it to change the proportions of it, I can always do that. So maybe instead of center of selection, I want the center of the mouse. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select stretch. And if I click from here, and I move it to the right, see how it stretches it out just a little bit? So you can always change these afterwards, these proportions. And that looks a little bit better. If I want to stretch it from the height and the depth, I can always do that from here too a little bit. So I can click and I can stretch it to make it a little bit you know, smaller, and smaller like so. And that works too. You know, and that's probably closer to the proportions that they have. So I'm always looking at the photograph too to get the ball, <coughs> the ballpark proportions. So I'll turn off stretch. And now I'm ready to go ahead and I'm add, add the surface to it because I'm happy with it. And then we're going to make the mitten, his hand. And then I'm going to take this whole part and I'm going to flip it over. And so we're going to mirror it to make the other side automatically. So we don't have to duplicate our, um, our, uh, our, our or steps. Okay. So I'm going to hit Q. And now I'm going to come back over here and set it default. default. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select brass again because that's what we have. And I'm going to click OK. There we go. So now I'm ready to put this with the rest of them. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command X. I'm going to go back to the last layer. And I'm going to hit Command V. And you'll notice that when I when I cut and paste in um, in Lightwave, what it does is it remembers the exact position and size of it. It's not like Photoshop or um, Illustrator where you have to say paste in place or paste special or something like that. It automatically remembers the proportion, the, the, the placement of it in, in space. And that's very important for us. So I'm ready to build the hand now. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use another layer. And I'm going to put these in the background, just, you know, for, for size and proportions and that sort of thing. And the tool that I want to use now <clears throat> for his hand, you can look at that, that little mitten shape, is that it's a, uh, I really want to start with a box. And it's very similar to the way you would build a head, but you know, much more sim it's simplified. So under create, I'm going to use the box tool. And from the top view. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and pull this out just a little bit like so. And then from the side view, um, I'm going to pull this down a little bit like so. Try to get the approximate proportions. And then I'm going to move it down so that it's right on top of, you know, where it needs to be. And I can um, zoom in a little bit make sure that the positions are correct. We can, I can always move it later, but as I'm building things, I kind of like having them where they're supposed to be. And I can move this up a little bit. And from the back view, I can zoom in a little bit so I can see the size of that a little bit. So I might have to change that. And you can see that it got moved a little bit. So I need to um, zoom out a little bit. And let's move this down. Oh, somehow I really messed that up. So I don't know how I did that, but I need to make that much smaller. And from top view, I'm moving over the edge and I'm making that smaller too, like so. So I'm looking at, you know, a couple of different views here. 
okay? Now, you're gonna have to trust me on this again. I know from past experience that in order to build the thumb and the fingers, <clears throat> I need multiple, um, I need a couple, a little bit more geometry, not as much as I needed <clears throat> in order to, to deform or reform the, um, the forearm, but just a little bit. So I'm gonna select um, um, segments along the X and I'm gonna select two. And along the Y, I'm going to select two. And along the Z, I'm going to select two. So I just need two segments. And you can see, since I have um, textured wired in um, my layout view here, that I can see all of these little quadrants here um, you know, that have been subdivided. So I'm good to go. So now I can turn this off. And now I need to build this thumb. So to do that, I'm going to select the top polygon here, right here. I have to go back to selection, center of selection. And now to add geometry that, for that, to build his thumb, I use the bevel tool. So B for bevel, <clears throat> and I click, just click, and that's it. And now I hit T for move, and maybe from the top view, I can pull it out like so. And move it over, and there's his thumb. Okay. Now, it doesn't look rounded like his, does it? So let me go ahead and turn off T for move. Let's deselect that polygon. And now I hit the tab key. The tab key, what it does is like what we did with the head, is it, it softens everything and rounds it out. And it makes it more like um, we're working with clay. And you can see that I have his, his, his thumb now. So now I need to make his, you know, the, uh, the fingers for his bit. And this is where I'd like to show you the difference between um, smooth shift and um, bevel tool. So I'm gonna select the two polygons for here. I'll select this one and this one. And because I want these to be joined together, I wanna use um, smooth shift. If I don't, and I use the bevel tool, watch what happens if I hit B for bevel, and I click. Notice how they're separate entities, and now when I hit T for move, and I move it out like so, you know, it's what I'm doing is this. Now, if, if you wanted separate fingers, um, that would be the way to go about doing it. That would be fine. But I don't, I want them to be together. So again, I'm using a, a similar tool, but just a little bit different. So I'm gonna undo that, and I'm gonna go back with both of those selected, and under, again, under multiply, I'm gonna use smooth shift. Now again, I just click, and I've added geometry, and now I can hit T for move, and I can pull this out like so. And if I need to adjust proportions a little bit, I can. So I'm done using move. So let's um, deselect. Um, so T for move and deselect that. So maybe I want to pull this out just a little bit. So I can go ahead and I can select, um, I'm gonna select from the, the back view here. I need to move in a little bit and that's very hard to see on my screen. I'd have to take off, but I can go ahead and one, another tool that I can use under modify is the drag tool. The drag tool allows you to move over any point or points and if you click on it, you see, this is the hard part to see this. Uh, right here. See, I'm not clicking. There we go. It's right there. I can pull that up a little bit so you can see that it's just, um, you know, at a slight angle. Here. See that? Okay. So there's his mitten. And again, if I need to, you know, if I want to bend his, his thumb out or I want to resize, you either select points or polys and make the um, necessary changes. So that's the, you know, how we make his, his hand. Now, if I need to resize this for any reason, um, again, I deselect. So T, resize. And I can go ahead and I can stretch it. So if I hit H for stretch, or again, if you forget any time, it's always under modify. 
select stretch and I can make it a little bit, you know, wider like so. If I need to make it a little bit deeper, I can do that from top view. Like so. And there you have, we have his, his hand. So now I need to color it. So I need to turn off stretch. And I need to hit Q. And now I'm just going to name this one red, because that's the color that it's going to be. We only have a little bit of red in here. So click that and let's click this nice bright red color and I click OK. And I click OK and we've got red. And I'm, these are just placeholders. If you want to use a different color, use a different color. So now I'm ready to take his hand, his mitten, and put it on the same layer as all the rest. Cut it, go back to this layer, and I'm going to hit paste. So now here comes another fun part that we're going to add. So all of these are on the same layer. And let's put um, this head in the background. So I hold down the shift key and I select that right there. I select the bottom half of that so that I can see this. So now what I want to do is I want to mirror all of this and make a copy of it on the other side. So to do that, I'm going to use the multiply tab here. And down here we have mirror. And now what I can do is I can select action and I can select activate. And you can see that it automatically creates a mirror of it to the other side. Now, if I wanted it mirrored along the Y or I wanted it along the Z, I could do that, but we wanted it mirrored along the x-axis. And now what I need to do to size it up is I need to take this orange widget and pull it in closer so that it mirrors it and it's just right there. And it fits snugly on there. So mirror is very different than if you were to work in, if you were working in a program like Illustrator. Um, because it, it Mirroring it, I mean, if you were to just flip, you know, your hand like that in Illustrator, it just rotates it basically. But this is actually creating a mirror image. So it's, you know, you have a left and a right side. You can see that his thumb is placed in the correct location. So when I'm done mirroring it, I can do that. And I can go ahead and I should probably be saving all of this as I'm doing this and I haven't been doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command S to save. And now I can put all of this on one layer. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit Command X for cut. And I'm going to go back to foreground for his head layer and hit Command V for paste. Now if I want to see this you now in texture view, I can. And I can, um, let's go ahead and view this as a single image here and I can zoom in a little bit and I can move this over and we have a pretty good chunk of his you know you know the top half of his body done okay now there's a couple of other things that I'd like to show you that um, you'll notice it as I zoom in and I zoom out on the perspective view um, that is separate from the others however when I move it they all move in unison well, how do I get this to zoom separately? Okay. So what you want to do, if, if that's becoming an issue for you, you want to hit D for display. And then under viewports, okay, that's the third tab over. <clears throat> what you want to do is in the bottom uh, or top right, okay, which is your perspective view, you want to make sure that independent zoom is checked because it's not by default. And if you want, you can have, in, well, independent rotation if you want, independent visibility if you want. And generally that's reserved for the perspective view, but you can do that for many of the others as well. So that's another little thing that I've added to that. Okay. So um, we're doing pretty good on time. Um, we've only used maybe 50 minutes of our time now. Um, I could go back into 
blender and we could give it a go of that um, and use the bevel tool. I think what I would prefer to do though, um, let me talk about the holiday and let me, let me do part of this over the weekend and then I will show you in Blender how I would approach this. Okay. Um, and give you kind of a, a, a kind of a, a crash course in, in, in Blender because I need to get up to speed myself. I'm being perfectly honest with you. I need to do that and to think about it. And there are certain things that you can do um, here um, that I'm much more familiar with that I'm still uncertain with Blender. So I need to review that. And rather than waste your time, I'm going to do that ahead of time. So um, I'll save this. Um, yeah, Erica, question. Um, are you making Mike and Blender on? Yeah, I'll do it on the weekend. And I think, because um, I'm running out of time here, and I know that I'm going to make a whole bunch of mistakes if I do it now, and it will just waste everybody's time. <clears throat> um, oh. oh, I'll, um, no, I'll, I'll do it on, on, let's see. Well, I, Monday is a holiday. So I, I, that was the next thing that I wanted to talk about is that, um, for those of you who want to learn it in Blender, I mean, I'm not going anywhere. I could meet up with everybody on, on Monday at 10 o'clock and we could give it a go. How does that sound? Sound okay? But I need to, you know, I need to stumble my way through it a little bit. And it's probably not going to look exactly the same, but I can, you know, I can get pretty close. And probably, you know, some of the things that Blender has that Lightwave doesn't have is that you have a sculpting tool. And that's very similar to ZBrush. So there are certain tools that are available in Blender that aren't available here in, in Lightwave. And you just, in, in Blender, you turn smoothing on and it smooths every, everything. But you'll notice, for example, one of the things that I can talk about here is that um, you can see the facets because I use the small, you know, the basic number for my joint here and for this. But if I wanted to smooth that, what I would have to do is I'd have to go in here, and you don't have to do that in, in Blender is that I could select my surface editor and I can select, for example, brass. And if I want, I can come down here and I can turn smoothing on. And notice how that smooths it out. It really rounds everything out. And likewise for Chrome, if I wanted to smooth all that and I didn't want, I don't want to see the facets and I didn't want to add geometry, I could turn that on. So I'll leave that on. Um, so there, there's a bunch of little things that they really kind of add up. Okay, so Erica, does that sound like a plan? Um, or can I can continue with this on Wednesday if no one's going to be here on Monday? Okay, so let's give it a try. And again, please be patient with me. This is, um, Blender is not my, um, yeah, same time as today, 10 o'clock, and I'll, I'll give it a shot. But I, I need part of the weekend to go over it and to really kind of um, experiment with it to get the results that I'm going for. And part of it is, you know, using their bevel tool and smooth and things like that to see how that works. So, okay. Because, um, you know, I'm eager to learn it, but I'm learning Blender along with everybody else. And I've watched hours and hours and hours of videos and worked on it myself. But, you know, there's really good examples with the Blender guru, you know, what he has done. So, um, yeah. So, not of the reboot character, but other, of other things. Like, um, I don't know if you've watched the series that he's done on making a donut. 
it is there's like 24 different episodes of that on YouTube if you subscribe to his channel and it it's primo I mean you say oh it's a stupid film you know but he really makes it look very finished and perfect it's really a good series to um, to do in fact in the future I might have if people want to work in blender I might have you um, just follow along with his tutorials for the final project and do that and see how close you can come to replicating what he's done. That would be a good assignment to give. Okay. It's, he's called the Blender or Blender Guru. So go to YouTube and look up Blender Guru and you can subscribe to him and he's done a gazillion videos and he is really expert at it. Guru, G-U-R-U, Blender Guru. He's a young guy from Australia. I think he's from Australia. Um, either that or New Zealand, but I'm pretty sure Australia. And he, um, yeah, it, it's definitely take a peek at all of his and he will help you out a lot. And you can maybe not, you know, when you do the toy and you want to do it in Blender, maybe he's done a toy that you can say Blender Guru toy and follow his step by step procedures and do it because that's what I, I'll be doing. That's how I learn. Um, when I was learning uh, web, uh, Lightwave years and years and years ago, I started with um, version six when um, Chris Wilson came on board with um, uh, to Cerritos and he preferred um, Lightwave to what we were using at the time. And I said, sure, who cares? You know, I'll, I'll learn it. But I, you know, I just bought at that time, it wasn't on the web. I bought a ton of videos and just watched it again and again and again and followed along to learn it because there just um, aren't any written tutorials like they are for, for Photoshop or Illustrator or things like that. There were for a while with Lightwave, but it, at, at version 10, they, it, it all ended. And now there's hardly any support at all. That's my main criticism with Lightwave because it's a very good program really, really good, and not too terribly expensive. Okay, so um, are we done for today, folks? So again, um, yeah, I'll be here Monday. But again, for those of you just strictly working in Lightwave, you don't have to attend. But I'm going to try to build this in um, using Blender and see what I can do. Okay. Okay, so if um, there aren't any more questions, I'm going to stop recording and um, say goodbye for the weekend and see some of you on Monday. And um, we'll continue building Mike here in, uh, on Wednesday, since uh, Monday is a holiday. But again, for those of you who want to see me do it in Blender, I'll do that on Monday. Just stick around. I'm not going anywhere. I'm stuck in my place here. I'll buy my lonesome. Okie doke. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the recording.